They were one of the great new technologies on the rise in the early 1930s, but then an unfortunate accident ruined their reputation. Where are we today? And really, guys, the question everyone is wondering, whatever happened to blimps? And one of the things I wanted to do with this video, I just googled how many blimps are actually left because... I haven't seen one hover over for probably five or six years where I'm located. There's only 25 left in the world with about half of them only used exclusively for advertisements. Can airships be part of the future with all of the problems with planes and climate change? Blimps could be an alternative, but how do we get the cost down on operating blimps to make them affordable for the middle class? And with their current speed, realistically, blimps, if we wanted to substitute them for planes, you're really only looking at shorter flights. You can use the blimp because they are a lot slower than planes. About 87 miles per hour uh, is the fastest one. But when it comes to blimps, we all remember the Hindenburg accident in 1937. It really was a sad situation, kind of reminiscent to the Titanic, where people immediately assume, oh, that's not safe, when in reality, if you actually look at what caused the Hindenburg accident, it was the hydrogen Blimps today have switched to helium and not a single Goodyear blimp has crashed. So they are a lot safer. The bigger concern is the cost. According to the Federal Aviation Administration, only 128 people in the United States right now are qualified to fly airships. Blimps were once used to collect photographs and footage from above and they still are today. But guys, you remember them over sporting events like 2009, 2010. We don't see them very much anymore. And that's simply due to the emergence of drones. Drones a lot easier, a lot more cost efficient than flying a big blimp. There is a big blimp that they want to kind of bring to public use called the Airlander. You can take a look at its interior design via these renderings. And yes, uh, the blimp travel is a lot cleaner, a lot nicer than airplanes. We all get on airplanes. We're all average people. We very likely have to sit in economy seating. You know, we're scrunched with other people. You pray you never have to sit next to a fat person. We all deal with it. It's miserable. You look out the window. It's a beautiful sight. You know, other than that, it's really not that enjoyable of an experience being on a plane. Uh, but what if that can change? What if being in the air becomes more of a perk and a positive? And I would say with blimps, it's more of the idea to where you make it an event like, oh, I'm going to go on a blimp with a group of people and kind of hover around for two or three hours. Blimps are really good at kind of just staying in one place, like hovering over a city I think the general vision of blimps should be, take New York City for example, renting one of them out, or you don't even have to rent it out, it would be like from 6 to 10 at night, or 7 to 11, right when the sun is setting, you get on one of the blimps, you can take, I mean it's just beautiful, it's spacious, it's spacious, it's basically like a private jet, even if there are 110, 130 people, whatever, the main issue is the cost right now uh, in terms of operating a blimp. And then there's the idea, could we get to the point where we actually have blimp airports that would really cut down on the overall uh, net CO2 emissions with the use of the planes? You use blimps for shorter flights, I would say two hours and under because the blimps are rather slow. You can't use them for longer flights. They would take forever. But the idea is, no, you use the blimp. The blimp is what you want to get in. Way more than a plane. So much more space, spacious. The views, you know, the way they have those renderings with how you can look outside. So much better than that little annoying window that other people sometimes control on a plane. They push it up. They push it down. You're trying to look outside. You're looking over someone's crotch. It's just not a fun experience. The idea with blimps is you go into the air and it's actually an event but the cost is so outrageous. They were thinking of planning a trip to the North Pole 
via one of these huge blimps that they're designing and the cost of it would be 50000 for two people. So that obviously is way too much. We would have to cut that cost down significantly. But I do think there will be a big investment done to looking into getting the prices on the helium, the cost, the overall operation of these blimps because they are so good for the environment. And I'm not even this big environment person. I just like blimps. I would love to be able to go up and just look around and not have 50 people breathing down my neck and then they come and they say, what do you want a Diet Coke? You want peanuts? No, we don't. We, we, we just want to enjoy the, the outside and look down on at Earth, but it, it's very hard on these planes. I'm sure you, you know, everyone knows it's just, it's, you're cramped in there, but it doesn't have to be like that. Well, you know what? Maybe it does have to be like that because let's be honest, nobody's shilling out $50,000 for two blimp tickets here. So we'll have to see what happens. Again, I'm sure there's this major push with climate change. Blimps are way better for the environment than regular airplanes. Could they find a way using technology to get the cost of operating blimps down, which would make it affordable maybe for the middle class? Or is this just going to be a luxury item because they are thinking of bringing blimps back? Is this just going to be a luxury item for rich people and the idea would be they would just float over a big city for like four or five hours and it'd be like an event and you buy these tickets and you enjoy a nice night. Again, the issue is if it costs $20,000, no one's affording that. It would have to be like, you know, instead of going to a really nice restaurant, you could do three or $400 per person maybe to have a really nice night on a blimp and watch the sunset over New York City. I think that would be a little bit better way. Uh, and then you also maybe get a meal on the blimp and things like that. But yeah, blimps, guys, it's so sad what happened. They got a really bad rap. The Hindenburg situation happens. The rise of airplanes, air travel, it's more convenient. You can jam more people onto it. It's way less in terms of cost. That's why the middle class can't afford to go on airplanes because the, the, the cost to operate them is way less. The fuelage is way less than a blimp. And the sad idea, again, kind of compared to the Titanic where... You know, everyone was scared to go on ships. It was really once in a million scenario with the Titanic. The Titanic actually is a lot stronger than modern cruise ships. I say that as someone that has studied the Titanic. It is, and people are like, no, it's weak. It, it, it sunk. No, it just, it was a perfect situation where the iceberg hit it. It was one in a million uh, the Titanic was built really well, and then people say, no, it's crap. I'm not going to argue with people on that anymore. It's dumb. But the Hindenburg happens. Hydrogen isn't even used for blimps. It's helium, so it's not even the same. Blimps are very safe, knock on wood. I guess, you know what? It doesn't even matter because no one even uses blimps anyway. So it's not like people are going up in them. But it will be interesting to see if somebody does invest significant money into trying to do some iteration of a blimp that would cost a lot less money. Maybe it's a little bit slower, but you would sacrifice instead of taking a flight from Ohio to Illinois and it, and it would take like, you know, an hour, maybe you take a flight from Ohio to Illinois and it takes an hour and, and 42 minutes, but you don't have someone breathing up your neck the entire time that, and, and you all actually get to enjoy it and you get to spread out and you get to go to it, you know, you get to walk around, you get a nice bathroom. I think that could be an ideal situation for blimps in the future for them to facilitate something like that, let alone the, the, the savings we would get on the CO2 admissions, but I do think uh, the CO2 admissions are manipulated. If you are a citizen, you should not worry about CO2 admissions. That is a government thing. Talk to China. They admit more than you, the United States. They would be the ones to talk to, but then they gaslight Americans and say we all have to do it. No, how about rich people stop taking private pl flights? Oh, but they're not going to, are they? They're going to still, but they're going to gaslight us and say, no, it's the public's fault. Yes, China admits double CO2 emissions, but it's because we're shipping all our jobs to China. That's not our fault. They need to have better regulations and bring their CO2 emissions down and then they can talk to us. 
That's what I would say about CO2 emissions. But no, I like blimps. They're, you know, we'll have to see what ends up happening. They are trying to bring them back right now. There is only 25 in the world. Many of them are private. You've got the Goodyear blimp. You have a MetLife blimp as well. Uh, they really don't do much anymore, though, because now, even if you want to get an aerial shot, you guys remember with ESPN, oh, it's the Goodyear blimp. They just use drones for all of that. It's so much cheaper to send a high-altitude drone up and, and get some of those shots. So that is the current status of blimps. They're trying to bring them back, mainly, I would say, because there's a big incentive in terms of them being better for the climate than the regular airplane, but there are big issues with making blimps affordable for the middle class and airships in general uh, when it comes to the overall cost. Again, I would say there's two different things you could do with blimps. You could try and use them for short flights. Obviously, you would have to somehow bring the cost down. Nobody's going to be paying you know, double or triple for a blimp rather than just a regular plane. That's just not going to happen, even if it is more space. That's just like, I, I would have to, there would have to be some way to bring the cost and make it competitive with, you know, regular airplanes, because otherwise people are just going to choose the cheaper thing no matter what. It's understandable. You know, blimps look like right now more of a luxury but then there also is the idea, what if you could go up for four or five hours over New York City, you know, with a group of people and you've got those beautiful views? When have you ever done that in your life? Guys, every time we're above the clouds, we are trapped with about 50 or 60 strangers all in rows of three. It's just such a different environment. You know what I'm saying? When you get to look at everything, you get to look, you're above the clouds. I, I think people really would pay for something like that. Uh, there are people, you know, the idea of paying to go to space, that's going to be extremely hard to do, even harder than, you know, blimp travel because it's just the cost is crazy for anyone in the middle class. It is unaffordable. Either way, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description.